everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, this is going to be the the, uh, the first episode of, uh, of quite a few, or I guess five, one, two, two, three, four, four episodes, yes. One of four episodes where we're going to do, well, yeah, because I did four wineries. So uh, we're going to review wines from Texas, uh, from the wineries I visited a couple weeks ago. Um, now, First of all, the wines that I'm going to be tasting are ones that um, I've had already, just so you know, I've, except for one. I haven't had one of them, which will be the last of all of them, um, but I've had all the other four wines of the five that we're tasting here. I've had them all, and I like them, okay? At least I liked them at the time that I was there, um, I felt, and I liked them enough to buy them. So now we're going to do a formal review of them. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the first one here. This is the McReynolds Wines. Um, 2004 Merlot, to get a little close-up of the uh, label there. Now, the McReynolds Winery uh, is almost literally in the middle of nowhere in Texas, okay, in the hill country, the, the northern part of the hill country. Um, and let me tell you, when I mean kind of middle of nowhere, good Lord, thank goodness uh, the GPS function of Google Maps works. Um, because depending on how you're going to get to the place, uh, you're going to go on down some dirt roads for a little bit, okay? Um, now, this wine I found I found was pretty interesting, um, and and I and this is why I liked it and bought it. So we're going to go through we're going to go through it now. Right off the bat, and I don't know if you can really tell, but it's kind of got an unusual, at least to me, an unusual tint um, or or redness to it. You know, Merlots tend to be you know, a little bit darker. Uh, a little bit more dark red. This has kind of a, um, I don't know, I'm going to say that there's a little bit of orange to it. Now, it is a 2004. It is beginning to age. It's, you know, we're talking six, seven years old. But most Merlots don't um, don't change the color like this in, in, in that short a time. Um, so if I was looking at the color alone, I would I would think it was a little bit older wine than it maybe is. But just on color alone, and, 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 and if I knew, knew it was Merlot ahead of time, I knew that would be um, uh, a little bit different. So we're going to call it a medium. On the red, it's, it's really kind of more of a brick color. Um, instead of that nice red, uh, some of the nice you know, darker red or garnet or ruby color, it, it's got a brick color to it. Um, it's clear. Uh, now let's go to the aroma. I can already smell it. And uh, so it's already coming out of the glass. So I'm going to say it's probably pretty intense. Now I'm going to call this aromatic, almost powerful, not quite powerful. And again, I know it's I know it's a seven-year-old wine. Um, I wouldn't call it youthful. We're going to say there's some age to it. Okay. Now this is where, where I find that this Merlot is different than some other ones. Um, it, it's not a fruit forward wine. It's very minerally. It, it's got some, I don't like to use the word chemical, but it's got a, um, there, there's a bit of like sauce quality to it. But I, fi I find it's got this kind of combination of, of not barnyard, but, but earthiness to it that I'm not used to, to getting I'm, in most Merlots. That's why this was intriguing for me. I was like, man, I want to want to take a bottle of this home and really like and really drink it instead of just like the, you know, the, the, the little while I spent at the winery talking with, with the, uh, the owner, uh, owners actually. Um, 
so I talked more with uh, Maureen than Mac than anyone else. Uh, matter of fact, when I drove up to Winery, she was, she was in the vineyard, very small vineyard. They actually outsource most of their grapes from other places in Texas, and they also have some others from, uh, like their Syrah, which I'm looking at their website. They get that from the Columbia Valley in Washington State. So they're a really, really small vineyard, a uh, small winery. So um, they have to outsource a lot of their stuff. But, you know, I, I, get a lot, I get a little bit of smokiness to it, earthiness. Um, you know, I, I'd almost think it was something else than, other than Malo. Not in a bad sense, like the Riesling, where I was like, yeah, I could be a Sauvignon Blanc for all I could care. Um, but, yeah, it, it's definitely um, you got some earthiness, uh, minerality, you know, and... and uh, And then kind of just like a sauce aspect to it. Not, not quite barbecue, but it's got that, got that, that, you know, sauce aspect to it. All right, let's try it out. Now, this is where it kind of takes another little turn. Um, it's dry. It's not bone dry, but it's dry. I would call it light to medium on the body. We're going to call it a medium body. Um, on the acidity, and this is something we only talk a lot about with red wines, but I'm going to call it kind of tart. It's got a little bit of tartness to it. And again, this is what I was really kind of intrigued by by this wine. Um, it's got some it's got some medium tannins. Now on the tannins, you also have the type, and this is something I haven't really talked about, and then we're trying to get into a little more. Um, I'm going to say they're they're kind of they're kind of soft and dry, okay. Balance. Now this is where we're going to get really critical of wine. I'm going to call it kind of a fair balance of the wine. Um, I think I think the flavors um, the the flavors are out there. Um, the the acid, the tannins. Uh, the sugar, the, the, the alcohol isn't a big deal, um, but they all seem to be kind of in, in conflict with each other, but it's not unbalanced. You know, I would say it's a fair, fair fairly balanced wine. Um, I, I enjoy it, but it's one of those things where music, okay, really well mixed song, all the instruments are there, um, but no one instrument necessarily outshines the other. With this wine... I can key into individual things. In other words, they're all there. They're all mixed. They're all mixed, I guess, well, or, or mixed, you know, if you were listening to the whole thing. But I can always hear, I, I, can, I can sit there and go, let's listen to this. Like, let's listen to the bass line for a little bit. Let's listen to the melody for a little bit. Let's listen to the drum or listen to the rhythm guitar. You know, I can pick each individual part out. Um, so as geekiness, I think that's what I really liked about this wine. There was like this geek level to me um, where I can pick out the individual parts to it. I'm just going to say it's, it's a fairly balanced wine. Flavor intensity, um, I'm going to call it flavorful. Um, again, just I, I can really taste a lot of stuff in here. Now let's talk flavors. Now here's one thing about this wine. It's probably gonna turn off a lot of people. There's a there's a sourness to it, um, like a sour, like a sour cherry. Okay. It's something that's not you're 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 used to getting more sweetness than sour, and I think this is something you, you well this is one you have to pair with food. I don't this is not something you could drink on the porch on, on a on a warm Texas summer night where it's raining like Crater did last night. Um, 
that'd be Rob Luguez. Uh, late in the morning when I came home from work, it was pouring. Finally, we got some rain. Uh, and he was talking about he was out on the porch uh, enjoying enjoying it. I believe he said he was drinking wine too. But um, it's kind of got a sour cherry thing to it. Again, there's that sauce, um, almost barbecue type sauce to it. Um, with, with that little bit of sourness and, and tang, kind of tanginess. Um, and I'm going to say that it's, it's kind of a medium finish. Now, here's, here's where we're going to go ahead score-wise. This is what I think the majority of people would, 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 would think of it. They would probably think of it as like an 84-point wine. Um, and that's probably really where it's at. Um, I enjoy it because it's, it's intriguing. And this is one of those things where when you find something really intriguing, you want, you want to try it out and you want to do more with it. Um, phone's ringing, of course. Um, of course, I hadn't had a phone ring in during, an inter during a review in forever. Um, I'm just going to let it ring. But anyway, um, 84 point wine. I think it's a decent wine. Um, it's something that, you know, if you're going out to, uh, oh, I forgot to say how much it was, um, 9.32 at the winery um, with tax like $10. But um, uh, if, you're, if you're out, you know, spend $10 on a bottle of wine, you know, it's something where don't expect it to be like any other Merlot that you may have had. Um, if you're looking for the Fruit Bomb Merlot or the very light-bodied Merlot, it, this is not quite what it's going to be. You need to know, you know, listen to how I describe it. You might like it, you might not, okay? Um, I particularly like it because of the intrigue factor. Um, if, if I wasn't into wine, if I wasn't like a geeky kind of wine person, I probably would say I don't buy it, okay? But with that said, this is one of those wines where it's kind of hard to tell you buy or not buy, because it's going to appeal to, I think, a, a certain kind of person that's looking for a wine, uh, but your general public, general Merlot, they're going to go, this is not what I was expecting. Um, okay, uh, I don't even if I started the, uh, I don't think I started my, my timer. I bet you I didn't, because we've easily went over seven minutes by now. Um, no, I didn't start it. All right, so that's going to do it for today's episode. Remember, um, come to the website, check out everything on the website, uh, donate. Um, check out anything in the ads, you know, the, the little the long thing. Check that out. Um, that's going to do it. We're going to see everybody again next time with the next 